Hello Game Devs. In this video we're going to talk about Hello Game Devs. In this video we're going to talk about agile development, scrum. Uh it's we're not going to go into super detail, uh but we're going to talk about what it is in general and when you encounter it uh in the workplace. Uh we're going to talk about waterfall uh as well as just general communication tips. So, um to start off with waterfall, uh, waterfall is a design theory and this comes out of like GE manufacturing um, where when you want to create a product in this case a game you write down all the requirements you design it out and then you implement it all and then you check it and then uh, and it's very uh, one group of work to another to another and this is honestly how I feel like a lot of companies structure their contract projects um, uh, there is uh, a set of requirements that is set kind of not uh, kind of in stone it might be a little bit flexible but it's it's set up right at the beginning um, it will all work for higher agreements uh, where you have to kind of write everything down and then you have to design everything and get that design approved and then you go to implement it um, and so this works sometimes uh, smaller projects are easier to deal with like this but um, you know this is just the method of management that some companies in uh, uh, use in order to create a product uh, now that's different uh, so it starts um, so uh, this is a lot easier um, if you start with knowing exactly what you want to make right at the beginning. So if your company is going into this saying like, oh, we don't really know how fun this is, this new mechanic's going to be. Well, um, you if you design the specifications, then it changes. Then you know that's more iterative. Um, so it's one of those things you generally don't change too much. Um, or if you do, then you have to go through the dis the process again. Um, but uh, it, it's easier for like fixed length projects um, and it, it usually means that uh, you have a small development team at the beginning for pre-visual work um, and then you know then a very large team during production so there's uh, also a staffing kind of process uh, through each of those stages as well. Uh, Scrum. Uh, Scrum is something that you'll come across um, there is something called a Scrum Master um, uh, but uh, generally what it is, uh, generally when people say this, uh, they're talking about agile. Um, uh, but what it, uh, what you'll probably be expected to do is talk about short measured goals. Um, this is something that happens every day. So I've been on uh, a you know, scrum meeting where uh, there is one person who is their job is to make sure the meeting doesn't go too long and that it gets going. Um, the attendance is mandatory and you have to be on time. So people who wander in two or three minutes late, um, you generally on the teams I've been on, we socially punish them with uh, dollars into the uh, um, uh, donor a jar or something like that but um, you have to be on time because otherwise these meetings then end up being a half hour uh, usually everyone's asked to stand um, there are three roles generally uh, if you're actually implementing scrum uh, again it depends um, there's a product owner the person who represents the company uh, or the customer um, then there's the development team who's making the things and then the scrum master who's kind of interacting between the two so uh, you know in this in the product owner um, the person who represents the customer it could be the CEO right like hey we need to get this going so that this is, goes out the door um, the CEO of your own company um, so Scrum Master is usually your producer um, or someone who's leading the project. Um, servant leader, that's the term for when you're leading from behind. You're just there to help enable other people to get work done. That's your role. Um, and the development team should be making stuff. Uh, Scrum is generally designed in small sprints, like two week long um, uh, goal periods in which you uh, identify you know, one week to a month total. Uh, um, and a month is a really long sprint. Um, so you really identify the goal um, that you need to have uh, done um, and you need to make sure that you keep your team to reaching that specific goal. So if it's like getting level one completely polished, uh, so it's like the way we would want it if it was going into the game. And then if the way it ends up is kind of boring and sad and not all the way arted, uh, we, you might talk to the team and say hey we did not meet our sprint goal here um, so uh, it's really important to measure goals um, uh, effectively as well so 
uh, typically what you're going to have when you're inside of a uh, stand-up um, they're gonna say they're gonna ask everyone is uh, what did I what did I do that helped the development team meet the sprint goal um, since last time we met which is yesterday so what did I do the yes the day before it's usually done in the morning um, what am I gonna do today that helps the development team meet the sprint goal and do I see any impediment that prevents me from the development team from meeting the sprint goal so hey is there a road blocker and you know that road blocker might be I'm waiting on design to tell me what environments to make. Um, so I just, I, I can't do anything until that's done. Um, so you might speak up and say that uh, to the group and then you're able to very quickly triage the day's project. And you're able to very quickly triage the day's problems. So, so, um, so there are a, a, a number of community, types um, uh, so one of the things that you want to recognize as a producer is that there's a lot of different communication types and that the communication um, goes on in a lot of different ways there's uh, and it depends on your team makeup and it depends a lot on your team makeup so face-to-face -face, email I am uh, which you know uh, uh, you know, maybe Discord channel. Um, it, it all uh, is something that you have to figure out. How is the team going to communicate? What's the best way to do it? Um, and how do you uh, increase the ability for people to communicate while also decreasing distractions? So some people uh, really can't handle people walking up to them during cubicle hour, or like during uh, up at their cubicle. They need privacy to code and to focus and to concentrate. Uh, so you need to be able to help those people concentrate, but also make sure that they're getting uh, that they're communicating with their colleagues to make sure that they do stuff. So uh, it really depends. You just have to be flexible. Some people are visual. Some people are verbal. Uh, one, another thing is some people look, see things in pictures. Some people see things in um, uh, uh Uh, some people see, see things in pictures so like also this is one thing I noticed that was like per studio so like some studios really love like long written narratives and lots of documentation and then some companies like really just want diagrams uh, and they don't want any writing at all um, or as minimal as possible so you have to just basically figure out what way is your team going to communicate um, and and facilitate that uh, and also handling disharmony is uh, a, a producer's job. It is, uh, is, is important to kind of maintain a uh, camaraderie and, and good work ethic. Uh, the way to do that is to take people aside privately and talk to them about why, you know, there might be some sort of disturbance in the team uh, and how you might be able to help solve that. Uh, you know, there's a lot of different reasons, but uh, one of the things that I've, I've learned from the Game Developers Conference is, you know, admonish privately and praise publicly, okay? So uh, always praise as much as you can and push people upwards, but then also uh, make sure that you can con communicate with people. And that can be something as like, hey, uh, um, uh, can, I, can I speak with you for a moment? Um, you know, this is and, and look at it as a behavioral thing, not as a you or a person thing. Um, it's, you know, that this behavior is something that is disruptive, not that you are a bad person and you are disrupting things. There's a way to, uh, you know, talk to some people about that. Um, but who is it that needs to be on a on a meeting? You know, um, there are leads meetings um, typically, uh, but you don't necessarily need every single team member. Uh, and it costs a lot of money to stick everyone in a big meeting room. Um, you know, I, uh, uh, I I remember uh, diagnosing a project where. I remember diagnosing a project where we were uh, spending a lot of time with a, a lot of people just sitting uh, idly in their meeting um, and they were just kind of waiting and tapping their fingers and kind of looking at their phones. So, uh, you know, it depends on who, uh, you want to limit um, the people in a meeting to who needs to be there. 
Um, also, you need to control the information. Sometimes protecting your team is about withholding information. Uh, this happens a lot uh, with like volatile clients, right? So like teams, um, teams don't like their goalposts change. It's a, it, there's actually a book called "Who Moved My Goalpost," uh, um, and uh, a lot of times uh, we can look at uh, how to protect your team by uh, making sure that you can handle your client and make sure that the client doesn't like change the expectations really fast and or often. Uh, often those those changing expectations can be negotiated or, or share, uh, shaved away. So you have to kind of keep a cool hat when you're talking with your uh, com uh, company. Uh, and you know, sometimes that's about not telling them everything, uh, strangely enough. So I think that's about all I have for communication and, and management strategies. Uh, I will see you in class.